Ani Bojo. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Jesse Wenthe. I'm the head of uh, TIFF Cinematheque. And thank you so much for coming to this incredibly special IMAX presentation of North of Superior. Uh, to begin, I would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit, the Haudenosaunee and the Huron-Wendat, the original keepers of this land. And I'd like to thank them for hosting us here today, and indeed, for hosting TIFF and all that you see around you every day in their territory. Miigwech. I would also like to thank Ontario Place Corporation for providing us with this film here today. We are thrilled to be presenting this film today as part of our Canada on Screen year-long program in celebration of Canada's sesquicentennial. Through this program, we are showcasing and celebrating our list of 150 essential moving image works from Canada's history compiled through a national poll of industry professionals. Canada on Screen is co-produced by Library and Archives Canada, the Cinematheque Quebecois, and the Cinematheque in Vancouver. I would like to thank the following partners for making Canada on Screen possible and completely free, including this show here today, our presenting partners, the Government of Canada, RBC, and the Government of Ontario, and our supporting partners, Telefilm Canada and Fairmont Hotels and Resorts. And finally, a very special thank you to Ontario Place Corporation and IMAX for working with uh, us at TIFF to bring North of Superior back where it belongs to the Cinesphere. <laughs> when, we, when we made the list for Canada 150, this title always stuck out because uh, I was like, well, how are we going to show this? We don't have an IMAX screen at the light box. I worked a year to just try to have them build one. Um, the capital campaign didn't go so well. So, but luckily the folks at Ontario Place uh, stepped up and we're, I'm just so thrilled to be here. Now please excuse my high school French, but here we go. Ces films sont présentés dans le cadre du Canada à l'écran, une célébration unique et gratuite organisée pour le 105e anniversaire du Canada. Durant toute l'année, Uh, 2017, nous présentons et célébrons, célébrons notre liste de 105e ouvres essentielles qui ont marqué l'histoire du Canada. Elles ont été sélectionnées par un jury national composé de professionnels de l'industrie. Nous aimerions remercier tous les partenaires qui ont contribué à Canada et le Canada. Well, that's over. Um, we have many special guests here. Uh, yeah, oh. Ontario High School French gets a round of applause. Oh, well, thank you, whoever screamed that, my family members. Um, we have lots of speakers, um, but I'm especially pleased to introduce our, our next speaker um, from the Chiefs of Ontario. Please welcome Chief Isidore Day. Bonjour. Nguisquem agasid in a indigena cause, denabajing donji, denoje do dem. K gets an arch in a dog way of mung wung mung pee, nungwa, nishke wing de wing wai yawa. First of all, I want to acknowledge the creator, creation, the prayers, and the protocols of this territory, which is the Mississaugas of New Credit, and the Haudenosaunee, and the Huron Wendat. I also want to acknowledge the dancers that uh, came here to provide part of the invocation. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, you saw four different dancers that participated, and I want to acknowledge them. Very beautiful, weren't they? There was a traditional dancer, a male traditional dancer. There was a male grass dancer. There was a women's traditional dancer and a women's jingle dress dancer. And just incidentally, I have, uh, came from a uh, powwow in Curve Lake First Station just yesterday. It's also happening today. Quite a celebration. But part of our, our customs uh, and our traditions, uh, they have these different dancers. And, and part of the process in, in many of our ceremonies ar around that sacred circle is the grass dancers come in and, and they flatten the grass and they, and they prepare for the celebration and rec recognition of the sacred circle of life. So again, I want to acknowledge them. I also want to acknowledge uh, Minister of, of Ontario, Minister McMahon, also uh, Jesse Wente, and some of you who don't know Jesse, uh, I was chief in my community for 10 years, and he was one of my bosses. 
Uh, he is from Serpent River, so I still consider him one of my bosses as the Ontario Regional Chief. As well, I want to acknowledge uh, Toronto International Film Festival and the IMAX Productions. I, I do want to, in acknowledging the land, I, I do want to acknowledge the history. And in this history that you see on this pictograph here in uh, North Superior, uh, my, my mother's family comes from uh, Batuana Bay and sh her last name is Agua, which is uh, very connected to these, these pictographs that we see. And again, what we're going to see here uh, is, a, is a, a small account of the, uh, the narrative of, of a time, a, a point in history of Northern Superior. The, uh, the North Superior is a, is a very, very beautiful, but a very bold and, and unforgiving territory and landscape. The territory being de depicted is, is uh, south of the, the northern watershed and as well on the other side of that watershed. I understand that we have some members here from the, the community that is uh, depicted in, in, this, uh, in this film from KI, Big Trout uh, First Nation, that is in Treaty 9. So I must say that you know part of what you're going to see uh, in this story are different shots and, and different uh, uh, different reels from uh, from various parts of the the Northern Superior region, which uh, in many cases, both pre and post uh, Confederation, there were treaties signed uh, between the British and the Anishinaabe people. Uh, what was really interesting about this film when I, I viewed it this afternoon again was that the, the first words coming uh, out in this production are Ojibwe country. Uh, I think it's really important to note that there, there are things that you will see in this film, uh, but there are also things that, that are, are still left to be spoken about and things to be, to be said. Uh, in particular, the, the, the First Nation uh, part in this production uh, looks, at, looks at a point in time, but there are things that you won't see in here. And, and I think possibly that you know, being a, being a short film and, and one that only tells so many things, perhaps that's part of this, is that it's up to you and I to begin uh, working again towards more dialogue about, you know, what the true history and, and what, the, what the future of Canada will be. So it's with that, again, I want to congratulate the, the production of this film and say that this is a very important step forward in uh, the silver screen and recognizing uh, not only uh, the history of this country, but what reconciliation will look like in the future. So again, uh, congratulate the producers. Miigwech. Thank you, Chief Day. The province of Ontario is truly a valued partner in making TIF a reality each and every year, particularly through the efforts of the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport and its agencies the Ontario Media Development Corporation, and the Ontario Arts Council. And new this year, thanks to the province, we are right here at the Cinesphere. The province of Ontario, under the leadership of Minister McMahon in our office, reopened this amazing theatre space just for us at the festival. And I'm thrilled to be in this space for today's screening. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, it is important to note that the Cinesphere was the world's first permanent IMAX theatre, and it remains the largest IMAX theatre in Ontario. Now, please welcome Eleanor McMahon, Minister of Tourism, Culture, and Sport. Thank you. Wow, what a great crowd. Are you excited? I'm really, <laughs> so am I, actually. I'm delighted uh, to be here. Thank you, Jesse, for that gracious introduction. Annie, bonjour. Bonjour, chers amis. Je suis ravie d'être ici avec vous tous. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here. And uh, I promise to keep my remarks short because like you, I'm enormously excited to see this wonderful film. And, uh, but I do have a few people to thank and so I appreciate your indulgence. Uh, I want to begin by recognizing that Toronto is on the traditional territory of indigenous peoples dating back countless generations. I want to show my respect for this history, for the treaties and for the ongoing contributions of Indigenous people in Ontario today and always. Chima Gretsch, thank you. So I'm delighted that Jesse is here. Um, his passion for film is, is well known by all of us. And as a regular CBC, 
<clears throat> listener, excuse me, I've heard him speak uh, with great excitement about the Cinesphere, as he just did now, and uh, it's really uh, great to hear that. Um, and he spoke about how pleased, uh, in a recent interview with Matt Galloway, he was to see it open again. And so now to see you here, Jesse, it's really neat, and I'm so glad that you are. Um, and of course, we're honored um, to have brought this screening to you today and to have returned uh, this beautiful Cinesphere to its original glory and how appropriate that we do so with this film. So Chief Day, thank you as always for your eloquent and beautiful remarks. You are a leader in the Indigenous community in Canada. We are honored to have you here today. Thank you very much for being here. <laughs> Mr. Ferguson, I'm gonna talk about you in a minute. But we're happy that you're here too. So ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Premier Kathleen Wynne and the government in Ontario, welcome, welcome to this special film presentation of the 2017 Toronto International Film Festival here in the newly restored Cinesphere Theatre at Ontario Place. Ontario is proud to be hosting TIFF and supporting TIFF in now its 42nd season. As one of the premier film festivals in the world, it is a cultural cornerstone for our country and for our province. Chers amis, comme vous le savez, 2017 est le 150e anniversaire de la Confédération canadienne. This year marks our 150th anniversary. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, it's the 150th anniversary of our confederation of our country and our province. And under the Ontario 150 program, the province supported TIFF in promoting Canadian films to Ontarians through Canada on screen, as Jesse mentioned including the Top 10 Film Festival that began in January and the National Canadian Film Day on April 19th. I am so thrilled that we will be seeing North of Superior, the groundbreaking 70 millimeter IMAX film that the Cinesphere was built to showcase way back in 1971. And Jesse, you're right. This is exactly where this film should be. And so we're thrilled to bring it to you. But I want to uh, join you, Jesse, also in thanking the folks at IMAX for your partnership, for your ingenuity, and for being here today. Thank you, this is an incredible honor that we have of being with, here with all of you today. And you know, Jesse, the pressure is off because um, no need for an IMAX theater at TIFF, at the light box, although we would love one. This is where it started, and here we are here today. And so I'm thrilled to tell you that due to an investment that we made in a state-of-the-art laser projector, the Cinesphere will, will once again be open to the public again for regular films and viewings and screenings, starting right here. And I was just talking to the CEO of Ontario Place, uh, Nancy, and uh, she's telling me that we're hoping, so fingers crossed everyone, next month it'll be open once again for regular screenings. So you can come and see this beautiful film and a host of others once again on a regular basis. You know, I'm a bit flooded with nostalgia here today, like so many of you. I look out on the audience and there's lots of young people, but those of us of a certain age remember this place and remember this film. And uh, I grew up in Windsor, Ontario, and I can remember seeing the film as a young person and feeling like I was suspended and flying through the air. Um, and uh, I don't think I closed my eyes for the entire 18 minutes. I was so riveted. And so for those of you that haven't seen it, you are in for an extraordinary treat. About 1.1 million people, that's a lot, saw this film the year it opened and millions followed in the following 40 years. Today on the last day of TIFF, I hope those of you who remember North of Superior are as impressed by it as you were the first time you saw it. And I'm sure like me, as I mentioned, you're flooded with memories, nostalgia, and pride. As your minister, I am always proud, but in particular delighted to see Canadian ingenuity on display. Graham Ferguson, you are a pioneer. That's kind of neat, isn't it? You are a pioneer. And when we, look, when we look back on the uniquely Canadian inventions and creations that have shaped our lives and our society, you will be on that list because of what you've done. And thank you for IMAX. Thank you. So thank you for sharing your gift with all of us. And for those of you who haven't seen it and are seeing it for the first time, you will understand why this film inspired filmmakers to raise IMAX cameras into space. 
sink them to the bottom of the ocean to bring spectacular images back for you to view in IMAX theaters just like this one around the world. In closing, friends, I've had a few iconic Canadian moments this week at TIFF. One of the others was the privilege I had to introduce Long Time Running, which is the amazing documentary film capturing the courage of Gord Downey and the Tragically Hip on their year-long journey across the country. If you haven't seen it, you should. It's remarkable. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm thrilled to be here for what I know is going to be another spectacular Canadian journey, and we're very excited to be here. I thank you, dear friends. Merci, chers amis. Merci, Timmy Gwetch. Thank you for having me. Enjoy the film. Uh, and now, please welcome the president of IMAX Theatres, Mark Welton. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, it's great to be back at our iconic uh, IMAX theater as we celebrate this month IMAX's 50th birthday. How special it is. And what a more fitting event to help commemorate this Canadian milestone than to be here at the historic Cinesphere. As we said, the first permanent IMAX theater for a screening of North Superior, which was the first film to be screened at this site. We're also incredibly honored to have Graham Ferguson here, the film's visionary director and IMAX's co-founder along with his wife Phyllis and Tony Myers, who also worked on North Superior. When it premiered in 1971, North Superior was unlike anything people had ever seen before. The larger-than-life aerial footage of northern Ontario landscape captured with IMAX cameras and powerful sound was groundbreaking at the time, and, re and you'll see today it remains the same, uh, just, a, just as spectacular today. This iconic venue in Pioneer Film helped help launch the legacy of IMAX, and what we're known for today, a cinematic experience with complete and total immersion. And many of the Hollywood's top filmmakers of today say North Superior was an early influence uh, on their filmmaking. While our network has expanded to actually 1,275 theaters, this being the first one, over 75 countries, we'll always remember where we came from, though. Today, we honor North Superior and our founders of IMAX, four Canadian visionaries, Graham Ferguson, Bill Shaw, Robert Kerr, and Roman Kreuter, whose curiosity and imagination revolu revolutionized the way people watch movies around the world. They embody the best of Canadian innovation, which continues to drive IMAX and what we do today. North Superior is an iconic Canadian masterpiece that celebrates the culture and beauty of our country, and I want to applaud TIFF for including this landmark film in the Canada's screening program. Finally, I'd just like to thank TIFF for helping this event uh, take place, of course, Ontario Place Corporation, and I'm so excited for the reopening. The IMAX team, of course, has worked uh, extremely hard over the last three weeks to, with Ontario Place to get the Gordon, and we can't forget Graham, of course, for making this screening possible. Thanks very much. Now, please welcome to the stage Nancy Rowland, General Manager, Ontario Place Corporation. Good afternoon and welcome to Cinesphere. On behalf of Penny Lipset, our chair and our board of directors, I'd love to welcome you back to the Cinesphere. We also are very honored to have Graham with us here today and to show this film. When Cinesphere opened in the 1970s, it was state-of-the-art technology. IMAX was state-of-the-art technology and North of Superior all together showcased the innovation and creativity that this province has to offer. And what happened in 1971 is as relevant today as it was then, so welcome back and we're pleased to have you here. We can never achieve what we've achieved without a lot of tremendous support from some key partners. And I have to recognize Minister McMahon and her team who were tremendous supporters from day one in terms of opening Cinesphere and getting us to where we are today. Thank IMAX and Mark's team at IMAX who were with us every single step of the way from our decision, first conversation around wanting to open Cinesphere um, to today, so we're extremely pleased to have that partnership and to continue to grow that partnership. And I also want to thank TIFF, who when we approached them and um, hoped that we could get um, in the books for a TIFF event at some point in time, and we're thrilled when we were actually able to make it happen this year. So we had a lot of help along the way, and we're really thrilled to be here today. And stay tuned um, for more announcements in the coming weeks in terms of the reopening of Cinesphere. Enjoy your afternoon, and thank you for being here.
Uh, and before uh, we bring up the last guest, and then we'll get to the movie, I just want to acknowledge um, that all of the, the this beautiful um, pre-show that you saw, um, the amazing entertainment you're going to see outside uh, after the screening is over, was all programmed by uh, my friend Cole Alvis. Cole, I think, is in the audience. Right, Cole, raise your hand. Stand up, Cole. Thank you so much, Cole. Chi McGwitch. You guys are going to be blown away. And remember, remember Cole's name. You're going to be hearing a lot of it. All right. Finally, please welcome to the stage the makers of the movie you're about to watch, uh, editor of North of Superior, Tony Myers, and the director, Graham Ferguson. First of all, let me thank all of you for coming. I, we, what we love most is audiences, and I'm happy to have a, Just the best. Such, a such a full house. Wow, wonderful. Um, I, Tony and I are going to do a, a question and answer after the show with, with, uh, Je with uh, uh, Jesse. Jesse. And so we won't, I don't think we should say much about, say anything about the film really. Uh, we'll talk, we'll answer your questions later as best we can. I just want to start by saying thank you for t to TIFF for naming it an essential Canadian film. That's a great honor and we much appreciate it. Um, and I'd like to say thank you because nobody's mentioned them yet to the visionaries behind Ontario Place. Eb Zeidler, the great Canadian architect, had the idea of making Ontario Place and making Cinesphere, and we all owe him an immense vote of thanks for his efforts here and in other places in Ontario for his good work. Jim Ramsey, who was um, a civil servant in the Ontario government in those days, made Eb's dream come true. And it was Jim who said to me, um, uh, I want you to go, oh, we, don't have the, oh, we don't have the map, but anyway, he, t he took me to a map in his office and said, here, and he, was ma he was making a, he was commi committing, commissioning films on various parts of Ontario to open the Ontario place. And he said, here, here's your part of Ontario. And he took, he says, you, you can go from Wawa West and you can go, you can't go right to the Hudson's Bay coast because I'm going to give that to another filmmaker, but you can have all the rest, everything in between. So anyway, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, miigwech. And uh, thank you, Tony, for your participation all these years. Thank you, Graham. <laughs> I just have one brief thing to add. Um, it's uh, fabulous to look this way out and see such a wonderful audience. And it's, of course, equally fabulous to look at the screen and experience what you're about to do. And I just want to say, I wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here. None of us would be here about to have that experience without the towering vision and genius of my dear friend, mentor, teacher, Graham Ferguson. So I'd like to thank you. Enjoy the movie. Beauty is not scripted. It's not typecast. Beauty is colorful and unique. Beauty is you.
What kind of man will come to this country? What kind of country will call him away? For it will take him, shake him, remake him. So sang the many who came by this way. the power. Ojibwe country, the land of the tree, brave, wild and rugged, cold and so free. Though I will claim you, I cannot tame you. So sang the trapper, the miner, the mapper. So sang the many who came by this way. Superior country, your history calls me. Time cannot date you, men cannot own. The cold winter weather will bind us together. Sang the railroader, the logger, the loader. So sang the many who made it there.
this way, eh? Come this way. Base camp, eight five three. Go ahead, John. I was kind of curious how long that thing burned in the night, you know. Yeah, you're getting close to it. You never know. It might be fourteen thousand. It just keeps on going. Yeah, Roger, John. I'm just on my way back there now to have a look. <laughs> What kind of man will come to this country? Only bear the discomfort and challenge For it will take him, shake him, remain. So sang the trapper, the miner, the map. So sang the many who gave it their name. country, the land of a tree, gray, wild and rugged, cold and so free. Though I will claim you, I cannot tame you. So sang the trapper, the miner, the mapper, and the railroader, the logger, the loader. So sang the schemer, the poet, the dreamer. So sang the many who answered the call.
Thank you. Please welcome Director Graham Ferguson and Editor Tony Myers. I'd also like to introduce uh, Duran, who's our interpreter, in case someone would like to bypass my French and ask a, a question in French. We can, uh, he's available to translate that. So what do you guys think? Fantastic to see it again. Yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah. My, my, f the question that I've been meaning to ask you since I rewatched this is, just how terrified was that moose? I mean, <laughs> a whole helicopters coming after him. I mean, there's hunters, but this seems a whole other level. How did you learn? How did you learn to? How, how did that particular scene come I about? Don't speak moose. You don't I speak don't moose. Know. So um, that was. Um, Get the mic. Hello, hello. Yes, that was. Uh, uh, I wasn't even there. I put the. There was no room in the helicopter for me, and so the camera. Oh, well, I guess maybe the initial shot looking down at the moose, I was there, I shot that. But then the actual shot of the banding of the moose, we just fixed the camera to the helicopter and they went off and did it and came back and the moose never said a word. <laughs> <laughs> and those historic and iconic aerial scenes, can you describe how you made those incredible scenes that opened the film? Well, first of all, I think it's okay if I introduce some of the colors. Please, yes, colleagues. please. Okay, the, the aerials were not invented by me. They were invented by the pilot, Fritz Meyer. And he is, I've flown with many, many pilots. He's the best. Fritz is here. Yeah. Fritz is here. Yeah. And Fritz not only did the created, invented and created these scenes for North of Superior, he then stayed working uh, on several more of the, or flying for several more of the Ontario Place uh, IMAX films. Who uh, have we got? Anyone else in the uh, the crowd that we want to introduce? Um, yes, I do indeed. Um, first of all, Brian Avery, the sound man. Brian, there he is. The, the sound recordist, I should say, to use proper current technology. <laughs> and to give you an idea of what, how important the sound is, think about that forest fire. Mm. The strength of the forest fire is not only the pictures that I was taking, it's the sound of the firefighters talking to each other and you hear the pitch as they get more and more anxious and worried, the pitch of their voices rise. That was Brian's doing. He had, he had put radio mics on some of them and the reason that Tony got that beautiful sound to work with was Brian's cleverness, invention. Yeah. Um, I wanted to, um, we don't have Bill Houston here. Um, he's still very active as a, as a composer. He, he, he wrote and he sang the song. And, uh, um, but he couldn't be here today, unfortunately, but he would love to have been here. And Tony, you could talk a little bit about Zolyanovsky and some of Absolutely. the other. Absolutely. Um, it's, um, uh, uh, Bill Houston was a very prolific composer and we loved Ojibwe Country. It's a perfect song for the film to tell the story. And, uh, but it's still one man, one voice, one guitar and we have the world's first six track sinosphere to fill. So uh, Zalman Yanovsky, uh, who I hope is up looking down <laughs> upon us now as, as we enjoy his, his work, um, gathered together the most extraordinary small little crew of musicians who are here today. Uh, first of all, Maribeth Solomon and Mickey Irby. Please stand up and take a bow, yay. They, 
they played all of the instruments, uh, a whole array of instruments, and the only ones that they didn't, one that they didn't play was played by um, a human drum machine, the very first one, um, who, who broke his ankles playing the tom-toms for two minutes as you fly across the water in the opening shot, and uh, his name is Brian Barlow. Please stand up and take a bow. Uh, Maribeth's brother, Lenny, also, uh, he's not here today, but he, sh he, he was also on the session, and then some of us chimed in with singing occasionally. Thank goodness you can't hear that too loudly. <laughs> Well, should we take some questions from the audience? Perhaps uh, raise your hand and we'll, we'll, we'll get to you. Yes, sir. Well, no question, but he said thank you. <laughs> um, I'd like to, I didn't hear it all, but I think I heard, I'm really deaf, and so, but I think I heard enough of it. Um, the a couple more people, people I would like to introduce. First of all, the idea for IMAX came 50 years ago this summer in my sister Janet Kreuter's living room Janet, would you stand up, please? <laughs> In Janet's living room, Roman Kreuter, her husband, and I were sitting having a drink before dinner. Janet can probably cook, remember this more correctly. And we got taught, we had both made films for Expo 67 with expanded screens, and we said, gee, if there ought to be a way to do this better. We ought and to be able easier. To make they were torture, those multi-projector films. <laughs> and Tony was the assistant editor on Polar Life. Um, the, we said it ought to be possible to, make a new, to invent a new kind of cinema which would have a screen ten times bigger than um, a normal movie screen, and it would be have screen, movie screens as, as high as 60 or 70 or 80 feet high, 90 eventually. And um, so we said, let's invent it. So we got uh, our colleagues, Robert Kerr and, and um, Bill Shaw and Bill Brookelman. And Bill Brookelman is here. Bill, will you stand up, please? Sadly, but the other colleagues have left us, but Bill and I are the, the last of them. Anyway, to come back to your question, we needed a theater which would really be make it clear, and a film that would make it clear that this was very different from the ordinary movies. And when Eb Zeidler designed this theater, at last we could put IMAX into a, onto a screen, show it to the public, and we designed the film, in fact it was Tony's husband, Mike Myers, who had designed the opening, and it was specifically designed to show you, here is, a, here is an ordinarily movie screen, now look what, and what a revolution we're creating. And that opening shot was designed specifically to introduce the world to our new invention IMAX. Thank you, Mike. Yes, sir. Hi. Uh, great film. Uh, I can't recall the name of the
So I think the question is, um, if you made this movie today, would you make it the same the same way? If you had to do it all over again? I think so. And I think the important thing about this, and very unusual thing, is that when we opened Cinesphere, this was the state of the art. Interestingly, 50, 46, 46 years later, this is still the state of the art. And there are very few inventions that I think you can say that. That there's never been, nobody's built a better movie theater with better projection and better sound than IMAX is doing today. And this is still the state of the art. And I think the, the main thing about w is that Roman and I, when we were having our drink before dinner and talking about the invention, we didn't, weren't thinking about documentaries at all. We were thinking about magnificent feature films shown the way they properly should be shown. And the most interesting thing about it being 50 years later is that we have had this superb film, Dunkirk, made in IMAX, almost entirely made with IMAX cameras. It's shown in IMAX theaters. The critics say, without exception, if you're going to see Dunkirk, go see it in IMAX. So that the st this is still the state of the art. Maybe someday it'll be surpassed, but we're doing pretty well so far. I'd, I'd like to mention uh, another uh, person who was associated with both films, um, David Keeley, mm -hmm. who uh, I practically helped build Ontario Place. He's been here almost as long as me. And he was responsible for the wonderful Dunkirk presentation and this one today. So thank you, David. Beautiful job, wherever you are. Thank you. OK, we've got time for uh, just a couple uh, more. Yes, in the red shirt. So the yeah, the question was, what was left on the cutting room floor? In terms of territory. Yeah. It was geography. I don't think um, I don't think I don't much. Know. We we actually filmed all along the north shore of Lake Superior. We filmed s from Wawa out to Kenora, and we filmed up to Big Trout Lake. And I'd like to say something about. Uh, well, I'm talking about Big Trout. Um, I didn't know Northwestern Ontario when I was asked to make the film. Jim Ramsey said. Jim Ramsey said. Uh, go to that place on the map. I'd been through on the train. I'd seen what a glorious part of the world it was. But it was absolutely accidental that he assigned it to me. And so I didn't know. So what I did is I took a few weeks and I wandered around northwestern Ontario. And I um, said to people who lived there, if you were making a film to show the rest of Ontario, what your life is like here, what would you film? And I just wrote down all the different things they said. So I did, we did our best, Tony and I did our best to put as many of those good ideas in as we could. And one of the best ideas I think was that we met a couple of uh, young indigenous people, a couple here in Toronto. I met them when, they, when we were planning the film. One was Jimmy Morris, who later was chief of the Big Trout Band. And his wife, Ruby, who's in the film playing soccer. Playing soccer. And, uh, um, and I said, OK, what would you film? And, and they said, film what a good time we have growing up in our reserves. And there had been a lot of bad publicity in the paper about the many very real problems. But they said, show people that we we enjoy our lives there. So that's why Big Trout is filmed the way it was. And the way we did it, uh, Brian and Ronnie Latour, the assistant, and I, I don't know about now, in those days there were no cars there. Mm -hmm. So we strapped the camera equipment in our backs and we walked around for a 
few days, and we would run into people doing something, like the boys on the on the raft. That wasn't planned. We just saw it, and we shot it. That was the that was the because I had been brought up in the tradition of cinema verite. You shoot what you see, and that was what. And and you record the sound. Always, you always have a sound recordist with you. Well, thank you both so much for bringing us this remarkable movie, even thank all these you, years Jesse. later. Thank you. Graham Ferguson, Tony Myers, folks. Be sure to join us outside for more entertainment. And uh, the 3 o'clock show will be in laser projection, if you want to see that. So thank you very much, Miigwech.